Hey everyone, Forrest Rogue here, and welcome to another episode. This episode, we're going to be doing another budget filmmaking build. We're going to be building some budget barn doors for your budget lighting system. Budget. So a lot of indie filmmakers out there probably use a light like this to light your setup. And why not? They produce a lot of light, they're relatively inexpensive, and they're readily available. The downside with these lights, however, other than the fact they get really hot, is that it's very difficult to control where the light goes. Now I've tried using the foil wrap method before, which does work to a degree, but I wanted something a little bit more permanent, as well as something that could be folded flat for easy transport. So let's get on with the build. So for this build, I'm going to show you the tools and techniques I use to build the barn doors. First off, you're going to need a light to put the barn doors on. You're also going to need a drill for drilling a series of holes, a pair of tin snips, some screwdrivers, a pair of pliers, a sharpie for marking the steel, some drill bits, a ruler for measuring as well, we'll use it as a straight edge, a few sheets of sheet steel, I use some 26 gauge, as well as some fasteners. For each door, I use two number six machine screws, as well as lock washers and nuts, as well as two quarter inch hex bolts, along with lock washers and wing nuts. I chose wing nuts to make it easier to adjust the tension without the use of tools. And don't forget to practice safe DIY. Okay, now it's time to get this light open. Make sure not to misplace any screws, as we're going to be using these later. Using the ruler, I started to mark out the cutting lines. I wanted the door to be an inch wider on each side of the light. Once the door dimensions were in place, I then started to add the hinge section. Now it's time for the cutting. Make sure that you're wearing gloves if you need to hold the steel. Once the piece you want is free, use your pliers to straighten out the piece. Using the light bracket as a template, I began to work on the hinge. I wouldn't be needing the SX material, so I cut it off. Based on a previous door I had already completed and was relatively satisfied with, I determined how wide I wanted the hinge to be, about 1.5 centimeters in my case. Using the door as a template, I made the other half of the hinge out of some scrap steel. A quick check to make sure it was going to work, and it was time for drilling. Not wanting to make my desk any worse than it was, I drilled into an old 2x4. Make sure that the bit you're using at this point will make a hole large enough for your larger bolts. Now that the holes are drilled, it's time to start bending the hinge on the door. Use the pliers to get a nice bend. Now you can use a door hinge as a template to determine where to bend the second half. At this point, I used my snips to trim a little off the corners, testing my fit as I went. Now it's time to start testing to see if my hinge was going to work. I slipped the bolts through both hinges and attached a wing nut. Since this is just a fitting test, I didn't need to use the lock washers yet. We'll save that for the end. I made any necessary trimming and continued testing. Once I was satisfied, I moved on to drilling more holes. When attaching the hinge to the light bracket, make sure not to go too close to the edge or there won't be enough room for the larger bolt. I switched drill bits and started to drill some holes in the light bracket using the same 2x4. I slipped in a smaller machine screw to make sure it was going to fit. I placed a hinge right on the bracket and used a sharpie to determine where to drill it. And same as before, I made sure that the screws would slide easily. Now it's time to assemble everything. I grabbed the lock washers and placed them on the bolts then slid the bolts through the holes. Once through, I threw on some wing nuts on the outside and again just tested to make sure there were no problems. When I was getting ready to attach all the hinges, I noticed I was no longer able to fit the glass in. However, I figured I could install the light bracket backwards, then the glass could still fit in. You could also swap out the glass for a piece of metal screen. Now it was time to assemble the rest of the rig. The thing I love about this setup is that it folds completely flat, which can save some valuable transportation space. I then took out my snips and nipped off a little bit of the corner. This should make handling the rig a little safer. After a few more tests, I was confident enough to attach the rig back to the light. Even though I was installing the light bracket backwards, it still went on without any problems. Also, based on the shape of the glass in my light, I was sure the glass wouldn't come out unexpectedly. I gave the doors a good test with my light on the light stand to make sure that everything was in good working order. After I completed making the final door, I removed the light from the bracket, took it outside and gave it a paint job with some black spray paint. Make sure that you're using a high temperature spray paint if you're using one of those high watt halogen lights. So there you have it, some DIY barn doors for your shop light. Your floodlight has now become directional. Now I'm currently using two of these LED shop lights to light my backdrop. And here I am with the barn doors completely open. As you can see, I'm getting a little saturated with light. 
Well, let's go back to normal. Now, as you notice, I'm using these neat LED shop lights. The thing I like about these things is that they don't really get very hot. As well, they don't consume a lot of electricity. So I can actually run many of these on a single circuit without having to worry about blowing the breaker. Also, if I'm on location and I don't have access to grid power, I can run many of these lights off a portable power supply and not have to worry about stressing my inverter or draining my power supply quickly. Now, because my shop lights don't produce a lot of heat, I just use normal spray paint. However, if you have one of those high watt halogen shop lights, I highly recommend to use a high temperature paint something similar to what you would use to paint a barbecue with okay thanks again for watching if you guys have any questions just leave a comment down below and we'll see you guys next time take care